just I want to share in the satellite navigation around GPS integration techniques. So as you're all aware, there's no need for a GPS introduction. Everybody knows and which is very familiar. Now we are in the area of our Indian own navigation system also IRNSS, which is NAVIC. And uh, we'll discuss something about the GPS integration. And in this integration, we are having a four types of integration today I want to discuss. One is uh, GIS integration, another one is INS integration, another one is pseudo light integration, and cellular integration. So let us see first, uh, just introduction about the, what is the need of integration actually. The GPS has found in many ways, in many applications nowadays, and which is very essential in our daily routine life. And without uh, navigation, we cannot be able to survive nowadays, just like how we are able, not able to survive without a cell phone. So compulsory, we should have a cell phone. And at the same time, we should have a navigation device also. And almost every uh, applications, so many applications will be using this navigation of technique, technology. So unfortunately, there exist some situations in which part of GPS signals, as you are all aware, the GPS signal is a direct satellite signal, direct signal. And uh, in so many cases, GPS signal may be obstructed to the extent that the GPS receiver may not be able to see enough satellite for pollution. Particularly in the area of urban conveys and deep open pit mining, etc. These are a few examples. These problems can be successfully overcome by means of integrating the GPS. In this, we'll discuss how the GPS can be augmented in computer-based tools. So let us see first type of integration. There is a GIS, GIS integration, a geographic information system. So geographic information system is a powerful tool of for capturing, storing, editing, updating, retrieving, analyzing, modeling, and displaying the data that are specially referenced to the Earth. So because so which allows the collection of data to be used for analyzer for some purpose in application purpose. Another one is computer hardware and software systems. So in this one, computer hardware and software which stores the data and allows the data for management and analysis. You can analyze the data and also you can be able to manage in whatever the categories you require and also can be used to display the manipulations on a computer monitor. And again, there's another last uh, component of the system is output system that generates an output copy hard copy of maps or images or any type of other outputs like storing or anything. So integration of data for GIS. So GIS integrates data from various different sources and helps to visualize patterns and trends that spreadsheets alone won't motoring. GIS allows see patterns, linkages, trends that could be booked in a big picture in a contest. So once you are seeing the GIS, GIS allows to manage the places such as watersheds, neighborhoods, communities, ecosystems, etc. So you can store in various layers, various layers. The example, you can see social factors, biodiversity, engineering, land use, environmental considerations. So like this, you can create the various uh, layers, depends upon the our data required. Street data, suppose buildings data, or visitation data, or integrated data. See, whatever the information, as we are going to see in the Google Maps also, in whatever the way, in whatever the layer you require, that can be displayed and others can be switched on like this. You can be able to arrange the information in various layers. So what is the functions of main GIS? So GIS accepts geographic input in the form of scanned in and out digitized map images. It rescales and manipulates the geographic data for different purposes. It includes a database manager, usually RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. It includes query and analysis programs so that you can be able to retrieve the answers to simple questions such as the distance between two points on a map or more complicated questions that require analysis, such as determining traffic pattern at a given interaction. It provides answers visually, usually as a maps or by means of graphs. So what are the limitations? So GIS is well suited to modeling hospitals, census districts in a manner described above, but is not well suited for the representing of catchment areas for the hospitals where there is poorly defined or overlap heavily with surrounding catchments. Secondly, the data themselves can also cause problems. So, and also much historical data can be, will be taken from historical maps, which may not be accurate. And the representation of the features from these maps in the GIS at the best will only be as accurate as original source. In reality, they are likely to worse and also 
uh, new errors that are added to the data are captured. So these are the few limitations. And thirdly also, the economic origins of GAs are located within the technological advancements in the earth science. The final set of limitations, GAs is practical. GAs is software, hardware, data and personal are costly. As a result, entering into the GAs is often more costly than originally anticipated and will be done with a simple care. Applications of GAs. There are so many applications, a few applications. GAs application tools allow the users to create interactive queries, analyze spatial information, edit data and maps, maps, weather forecasting, sales analysis, population forecasting, land use planning, present the results of these operations. It is attachment to many operations that and has many applications related to engineering, planning, management, transport, insurance, telecommunication, business. So always almost all fields the GAS is taking. Now how to integrate the GPS and GAS. So these are the simple block diagram for GPS and GAS integration. So where you can protection, monitoring risk management and management rescue rehabilitation resource management and the geodetic techniques where you can have the classical and spatial techniques so where you can be able to disasters like earthquakes cyclones volcanoes so landslides etc so gis with gps so gps is used to collect the gis field data efficiently and accurately with gps the data is collected in a digital format in either real time or post processing a number of GPS GIS systems that provide centimeter to meter accuracy level and now it is available in the market. So pen computer based systems are usually used by some GPS receiver manufacturers to allow the data to edit and display it as it is collected. Many industries including utility management, forestry, agriculture, public safety and fleet management system can be benefited from this integrated GIS system. So GPS has long been a tool for GIS data collection. It allows us to capture locations of city facilities and assets in a digital format in the field and to easily download to GIS as data layer. Besides the benefit of GPS as a navigation aid, GPS is an important component of GIS database maintenance system. So early integration methods. And uh, the early uh, software developers limited to two methods of GIS, GPS integration uh, with their field application. The simplest integration method utilizes an ASCII interface which more sophisticated solutions such as using a binary GPS interface. The ASCII interface is based on the NMEA0183 protocols and which is a ASCII sentences generated by the receiver and communicate, communicates with the host applications via serial data connection. The NMEA, there is a National Marine Electronic Association specification is in the public domain and is standard for interfacing with the most forms of navigation electronics. And these are the two early method of integration techniques, NMEA. NMEA is a very common method for GPS uh, GIS integration and has been used use of NMEA 0183 protocol. This generic cost interface complements all of the other interfaces for navigation equipment such as a ship radar, sensors, thermometers and a chart plotter drivers. And a binary. So Trimble standard information protocol is set of binary messages used for two-way communication with their GPS receivers. The binary TSIP protocol is efficient and makes use of this special special qualities of each receiver. Latest GPS and GAS uses the Active X controls, GPS receiver controls, GAS controls, and wrapper is a software technique. These are the latest methods. So GPS receivers control and GAS control. So GPS receiver software and where you can have the GP, through GPS receiver and also you can have the GAS and GAS controls and also you can have wrapper field software you can be able to integrate all the components so GPS integration with so next category you can see with INS inertial navigation system so in this one we can what is the let us see what is the inertial navigation system and let us see how GPS can be integrated with INS. So inertial navigation system, INS. So an inertial navigation system is a navigation aid that uses a computer, a motion sen sensors like accelerometers and a rotation sensors like gyroscopes. 
to continuously calculate the position orientation and velocity of a moving object so this ins mainly to monitor the moving object by means of a position orientation and velocity so ins is used on vehicles such as ships aircraft submarines guided missiles and space craft other terms used to refer to the initial navigation systems closely related to device include inertial guidance system inertial instrument inertial measurement unit iap so this is a simple example of inertial navigation system with the help of this axle barometers and where this mounting gyros and etc so ins what is ins actually inertial navigation system is self contained navigation technique in which measurements provided by axle barometers and gyroscopes are used to track the position and orientation of an object related to the known starting point that is orientation velocity and imu that is inertial measurement units typically contains three orthogonal rayed gyroscopes and three orthogonal axle barometers measuring angular velocity and linear acceleration respectively by processing the signals from these devices it is possible to track position and orientation of any moving object or any device so ins applications where you use this ins applications Inertial navigation is used in a wide range of applications, including the navigation of aircraft, tactile and strategic missiles, spacecraft, submarine, and ships. So, recent advancements in the construction of MMs, that is, the microelectromechanical systems, have made it possible to manufacture small and light inertial navigation systems. With the help of this MMs technology, we can be able to achieve to manufacture small and light inertial navigation systems. So, what is the main principle of this inertial navigation system? The NS is initially provided with its position and velocity from another source. So, thereafter, computes its own updated position and velocity by integrating information received from the motion sensors. The advantage of INS is that it requires no external references in order to determine its position, orientation, or velocity once it has been initialized. First, of course, you have to initialize. Once it is initialized, no need to. Again, a difference uh, system is not at all necessary. An INS can detect a change in geographic position, a move east or north, for example, a change in velocity, that is speed and direction, or a movement, and a change in its orientation, rotational around an axis. It does this by measuring a linear acceleration and angular velocity applied to the system. Since it requires no external differences after the system, it is immune to jamming and also deception. So, principle of uh, inertial navigation, a dead rocking technique. In navigation, dead rocking is the process of calculating one's current position by using a previously determined position or fixing and advancing that position based upon known or estimated speeds over lapse of time, of course. So, a dead rocking system. And also gyroscopes, gyroscopes and accelerometers. So, gyroscopes measure the angular velocity of a system in the inertial difference frame by using the original orientation of the system in the inertial difference frame as initial condition and integrate the angular velocity, the system's current orientation is known at all times. And whereas accelerometers, accelerometers measures the linear acceleration of the system in the inertial difference frame but in directions that can only be measured related to the moving system. Since the accelerometers are fixed to the system and rotation, and rotate with the system, but they are not aware of their own orientation. By tracking both current angular velocity of the system and current linear acceleration of the system, measure related to the moving system, it is possible to determine linear acceleration of the system by the inertial difference frame. Performing integration on the inertial accelerations using the original velocity as its initial conditions using the correct kinematic equations yields inertial velocities of the system and also integration again. And what are the errors we can be able to expect? And the errors, uh, inertial navigation usually used to supplement other navigation system providing high degree of accuracy than is possible with the use of any single system. For example, if in a terrestrial use, the inertially tracked velocity is intermittently updated to zero by stopping, comma, the position will remain precise for such longer time, so the zero velocity update, zero velocity update. And uh, now let us see what is GPS and GINS integration, how we can have achieved this one. 
estimation theory in general and Kalman filtering in particular provide a theoretical framework for combining the information from various sensors. One of the most common alternative sensors is a satellite navigation radio such as GPS which can be used for all kinds of vehicles with direct sky visibility. By properly combining the information from a GNS and other systems like GPS etc., the runners can in position and velocity are stable. And furthermore, INS can be used as a short form, short term fallback with GPS signals which are unavailable. Whenever unavailable, it can be able to manage because only at the initial stage, in the different stage only, it is required and afterwards it can be able to manage even though there is no GPS signals. So how this IMU is integrated with the GPS. So it is a rate of acceleration, navigation and uh, with the help of this extended Kalman filter, GPS primary and GPS compass, GPS receiver 1, receiver 2 and double reference or calculation ambiguity. It is a simple block diagram for this IMU, how we are integrated with GPS. So GPS, INS integration, IMU unit, GPS secondary unit, GPS primary unit and both if you are together you can be able to go for a L1 and L2 signals and also inertial mechanism algorithm by means of acceleration angular velocity and where you can be able to get the GPS inertial blending algorithm by using and where you can be able to get it GPS navigator and GPS position velocity and correction of INS with GPS we can be able to correct it. also you can be able to make any this you uh, can be able to improve the accuracy by means of simple corrections estimated position, velocity and attitude and uh, GPS INS summary. So let us, uh, how, what we can be able to achieve with GPS and INS integration is GPS INS use of GPS satellite signals to correct the cali to correct or calibrate a solution from inertial navigation system. Inertial navigation system usually can provide an accuracy, accurate solution only for a short period of time. The INS accelerates produce an unknown basis signal that appear as genuine specified force. So this is integrated twice and produces an error in position. Additionally, the ANS software must be used to estimate of an angular velocity of uh, this one and uh, typically the angular position is tracked through an integration of angular rate from the gyro sensors. So this also produces unknown biases that affect the integration to get the position of the unit. The GPS gives an absolute drift free position value that can be used to reset the INS solution or can be blended with it by means of a mathematical algorithm such as Kalman field. The angular orientation of the unit can be inferred from the series of position updates from the GPS. The change in error in position related to the GPS can be used to estimate the unknown angular error. And what are the merits and the demerits of this GPS and INS integration? Let us see some benefits. So, INS may be calibrated by GPS signals because INS also can be able to calibrate but can, can be easily calibrated by means of GPS signals. IN can provide the position and angle updates at a quicker rate than GPS. For high dynamic vehicles such as missiles and aircraft, INS fills in gaps between GPS positions. And additionally, GPS may lose its signal and the INS can continue to compute the position and angle during the period of lost GPS signal. Because as I told, only initially it requires the GPS signal and afterwards it can be able to carry out. And the two systems are complementary and are often employed. And is one of the products which is available in the market. The VN200 SMD, SMD means surface mount devices, is a miniature of high performance GPS aided inertial navigation system combines MEMS inertial sensors, highly sensitive to GPS receiver, and advanced Kalman filtering algorithms to provide optimal estimates of position, velocity, and orientation for the various industrial applications. So, this is the second type of integration we discussed about GPS and INS integration. Let us see pseudo light integration. So, what is pseudo light integration with GPS? So, a pseudo light, what is a pseudo light? A pseudo satellite can be considered as a satellite on the ground that transmits GPS like ranging frequencies. It transmits a signal with code phase, carrier phase, and data components in the same timing and format same as GPS signal. A GPS receiver 
acquires the signal and delivers pseudo range for navigation and the pseudo lads are used since early 1970s about 50 years back itself we are using this uh, pseudo lights so this uh, pseudo lights and they are used initially to touch the initial gps user equipment so generally first you can be able to initially use to touch the initial gps user equipment during the last decade and investigations into use of pseudo lights for a general positioning and navigation and operation approach for civil aviation have been increased and pseudo lights placed in a stratosphere that can transmit signals to improve the accuracy availability and integrity of gps based positioning systems so multiple pseudo lights transmitting gps compatible signals can be can from a stand alone position system if appropriate data collection and processing techniques are used and what is the pseudo light technology so pseudo range and carrier phase measurements can be made on pseudo light signals So latest pseudo lights and equipped with some advanced features to for overcoming their shortcomings, such as near near fault problems and enhancing the performance. And there will be various types of pseudo lights depends upon application, such as direct range pseudo lights, mobile pseudo lights, digital data link pseudo lights, and synchro lights and stratal lights. So these uh, depends upon application. You can use any type of these pseudo lights. So black diagram of pseudo light transmitter. So it is a simple black diagram. So it is pseudo light transmitter, and then will be there of course, and uh, C by A character code, PLL loop filter. See, these are the basic first thing is we have a VCO microwave frequency oscillator, and the loop filter, and the PLL circuit, and also by means of filters, you can be able to get the pseudo light signals. Black diagram of pseudo light transmitter. The pseudo light architecture is originally developed as a single frequency system. Later, it is improved to full dual and multi frequency systems. Depends upon the various requirements of applications. A pseudo is to generate high frequency carrier, and C by A is used to generate the employment to provide a coherent C by A shipping loops. The temperature controlled crystal oscillator TCXO provides reference. Uh, reference frequency to generate a carrier as well as CA code. So carrier is modulated by CA code, and resulting model prepared by signal is filtered and transmitted. So this is a near fault problem with pseudo light. So we can have the pseudo light, and we have a GPS receiver we can have here, and uh, we have far field boundary and also dynamic range. So this here we can have the near field boundary. So near fault problem. What is the near fault problem? Actually, the GPS satellites are far away, and the receiver signal power is very low, and power is very slightly over the edge. Because the pseudo lights are positioned nearby, received power varies largely with the distance. The received power decreases with the reciprocal of value of the squared distance. Consequently, the nearby strong pseudo light signals cause interference with GPS signals and can jam the GPS receivers if they are. Situated inside the sudden distance called the minor field region of pseudo lights, the near field region of pseudo lights. Beyond a particular region called a far field region, the pseudo light signals can be too weak and to be tracked by GPS receivers. This aspect and dynamic range of C by A code results in a minimum and maximum range between transmitter and receiver. So to navigate with the signals, both satellites and pseudo light receivers must remain in a Zone between the boundaries as dynamic range, where both signals can be tracked. The and what are the applications of pseudo lights? Pseudo lights augmented with GPS, whereas in terrestrial applications, marine applications, you can use these things mostly. And also standalone navigation systems also using PLs, the pseudo lights, and nowadays, and even PL is a satellite for more. Things. So is it? Just like our satellites. So suppose you can say pseudo lights in mines. You can see. Suppose that directly the GPS will be there. The mining, the pit. Once you are going in the depth, the signals may not reach. The signals may not reach. So what they will do once it is initiated, will catch up this with the help of the pseudo lights. Where you can be able to reach the directly to the receiver. So this is another portion of this uh, pseudo lights in mining, various uh, depth regions. You can place the various pseudo lights to overcome the direct range because here only even the four satellites will be there. 
only minimum four is required to find out the this 3D position. So only two satellites are only able to visualize this in-depth bit picture. So that's why you can use the pseudo lens. So pseudolites are stratolites. Pseudolites are stratolites are pseudolites positioned in stratosphere at around 25 to 50 kilometers. So augmentation of GPS also using pseudolites. So these are the various uh, uh, strategy where you can be able to place the various uh, stratolites. So this also. So inverted GPS method locate shadow lights. You can use this as this pseudo lights. So standalone pseudo light based navigation system. So self calibrating pseudo light networks. The system is based on the transceivers which are deployed either manually or automatically in the required operating region. Then the self calibrated in relation with another setting up a local independent navigation environment. The user is subsequently able to determine his position on his area with the support of signals emitted by the receivers. So these are the simple examples for this self-calibrating array of students. Self-calibrating mass. And uh, military pseudolites, MPLs may be hosted on a different platforms. Potential MPLs, MPL platforms include aircraft, unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, and high altitude and long uh, endurance, airships, ships and over and other sea-based platforms. For technical reasons, stationary platforms are preferred to host as MPLs. MPLs provide only limited coverage, and all stationary pseudolites can provide a coverage over approximately 60,000 kilometers. MPL do not require any support form or interface with the existing GPS control segment. Alone, you can be able to use it. These are the examples. And, uh, the last application is GPS into the cell phone and a GPS, a GPS extends is used with GPS cable cellular phones and a picture, the symbol of picture of this various base stations and etc. And uh, a GSM network comprises many of the functional units. One is mobile station and base station subsystem BSS, the network switching subsystems NSS, the operating subsystem OSS. So this is a simple architecture of this GSM. And mobile station. What is a mobile station? Mobile station is a kind of consisting of a physical equipment such as radio tra transceiver, display and display signal processor and a SIM card. It provides the air interface to the user in GSM networks. So this is GSM4 and a GSM SIM card. The base station, the BSS. The BSS comes of two parts. One is base transceiver station, BTS, and base station controller, BST, BSC. The BTS and BSC communicate across the specified IBS interface, enable operations between the components that are made by different suppliers. Radio components of BSS may consist of four to nine cells. So this is a stand DPS, GPS. Standalone GPS provides first position in several minutes. A standalone GPS needs an orbital information of the satellites to calculate the current position. So the data rates of the satellite signal is only 50 bits per second. So downloading orbital information like FM rights and the almanac directly from the satellite indicates it takes very long time. And if the satellite signals are lost during the acquisition of the information, it is discarded and the standalone system has to start from scratch. So that's why you can use the cellular signals interfacing whenever such a type of difficulty surface. In A GPS, a network operator deploys a GPS server, and these A GPS servers will download the orbital information from the satellite and store in uh, it in a database. A GPS, that is a stored GPS, a cable devices, and connect these servers and download the information using mobile network radio bearers such as GSM, CDMA, WCD, LTE. So we are in the era of LTE now, or even using other wireless radio comparators such as Wi-Fi. So usually the data rates of these barriers are high, hence downloading orbital information takes <coughs> very less time. So what is the need of this stored GPS? Standalone self ruling GPS units depend solely on information in the actors. And A GPS augments that by using cell tower data to enhance the quality and precision when poor satellite signal conditions. In exceptionally poor signal conditions, the examples in urban areas and satellite signals may exhibit 
मल्टीपथ प्रोपोगेशन वे सिंगल्स स्कीप ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स और और वीकेंड वे मेट्रोलॉजिकल कंडीशंस और फ्री कैनोपी एंड सच सम स्टैंड एलोन जी पी एस नेविगेटर्स वैन यूज इन पूर कंडीशन विल बी एबल टू फिक्स दी पोजिशन बिकॉज ऑफ दाइटेड सिंगल फ्रैक्चर एंड मस्ट वेट फॉर बेटर साइड रिसेप्शन ये जी पी एस यूनिट में रिक्वायर एज लॉन्ग एज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव मिनट्स टू रिजॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड वी एबल टू प्रोवाइड ए करेक्ट लोकेशन एंड वी कैन यूज दिस ए पी एस इन वेरियस मोड्स मोबाइल स्टेशन बेस एम एस बी एंड मोबाइल स्टेशन असिस्टेड एम एस सी so information used to acquire the satellite signals quickly and it can supply orbital data or orbital map for the gps satellites and the gps receivers enabling the gps receiver to log the satellites more rapidly in such cases whereas in mobile station assisted calculation of the position by server using information from the gps receiver the device captures a snapshot of gps signals the approximate time for the server to later process in their position the assisted server has a good satellite signals and uh, Plentiful computation of power, so it can be com uh, compare fragmentary signals to the latest. And uh, this is a simple block diagram for this a GPS, a straight GPS. And GPS tracking devices, GPS tracking devices are built on a reliable and high performance system that utilizes a GPS and GPS and cellular technology to acquire the location data and present it to you to the user. The device itself acquires the location from a stored GPS and GPS satellites and transfers the data to the server via cellular GSM. The data is encrypted and can be sent to Pocket Finder servers. Then it is accessed by means of user via the website or mobile devices. Any one of the you can use it. The simple tracking technique. To the personal tracker, where you can be able to track, and where you can be able to send the commands to your phone, so with the help of the GPS satellites and also GSM stations. 